All right, welcome. We're going to be going over, focusing on how to balance chemical equations. What we're basically going to review right now is why we do it. Um, again, a chemical reaction um, is just an equation that basically provides us a recipe. Um, it tells us our reactants in our products, so what goes in and then what's produced at the end. Um, substances being reacted are called our reactants. The ones that are being formed we refer to as the products. Reactants are always on the left, products are always on the right. We also can show our phases. We can represent the number of moles, which we'll focus on next unit. And we can also show energy that's lost or gained. Um, all reactions must conserve mass, charge, and energy. This simply means that the total mass energy content and electric charge of the reactants must be equal to those of the products. They have to be equal to each other on both sides of the arrow. Now to, for us to show a conservation of mass we're going to use coefficients um, and we can only change the coefficients. We cannot touch any of the subscripts. Um, and remember the coefficients are these blue numbers out in front. The twos, um, the subscripts, we cannot touch at any point while we are balancing. Um, this is a strategy. Some students refer to it as the minnow strategy. Some refer to it as the mino chemistry strategy um, in a Tarzan voice. Whichever works for you is fine. Um, this kind of gives you an order or kind of like a template to follow when we're going to be balancing these. You start off with metals. You then balance out any polyatomic ions. If anything's left to be balanced, you work with the nonmetals before moving on to oxygen and hydrogen. So we're going to go through a couple of these examples. Um, the big thing is, is that I'm going to show you the strategy where we're going to be tallying and writing stuff below it. It's just a way for many students to organize their information. So the first step is I'm going to list each of the elements. So I have C, H, and O. I'm going to keep the same order on the right. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have nothing in parentheses so I don't need to worry about counting at this one. I'll point some things out in a uh, further example. I have one carbon on the left. I have four on hydrogen on the left and I have two oxygen. And then on the right I have one carbon, I have two oxygen, oh I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to that one. I have two here, okay, and I have one here. I'm gonna add them together. We never wanna write them separately because that will definitely throw you off. Um, so I have three total oxygen and then I just have two hydrogen. Okay, so let's go ahead and balance them. My carbons are already at the moment balanced, so I can leave those alone. So then we're going to work with our oxygen. Now, normally that's the next thing on our list, but since it's in two spots, I'm going to hold off and see by balancing the hydrogens if that will balance out my oxygens. So if I already have four on the left, I want to think about what can I put in front of this H2 that will make me have a total of four. Well, two times two can give me a total of four. So that correctly balances that part. I now though have to update anything else that's attached to that compound. So this now means I have two oxygen. So two plus two now shows that I have four oxygen. So carbons, hydrogens all set. I just need to finish off on the left with oxygens. So I'm gonna place a two out in front because two times two is gonna get me four. So now carbons, hydrogens, oxygens are all set. Um, you can go ahead and place ones in front of the methane, CH4, and the carbon dioxide, CO2. All right, for this next one again, go ahead, um, write down Al, Br, K, and then write down the same order on the other side, Al, Br, and K for potassium. Go ahead and count them. We only have one Al. We have three bromine and one potassium. On the other side, we just have one of each. So this one's pretty straightforward because the aluminums right now are balanced, potassiums are balanced, so I can move on to my bromine nonmetal. Um, this one, again, what times one will get me up to the three that I need to balance out the other side? That would be a three. Um, that's going to change my bromine to three, but also changes potassium. You can't forget about that change. So three potassium. I now have on the right. So aluminum, bromines match, potassium though, I need to now make a three on the left. Three times one is gonna give me a total of three. So now everything's all set, those all balance. I can go ahead and just place ones in front of the remaining compounds. I have conserved mass, so this one is all set. All right, um, this one, if you can just make sure before we start this that you change this formula. You needed to add a two in after Fe and then make sure the CO3 is in parentheses with a three after it. Now this one's going to be different because we have a polyatomic ion. Because CO3 is written exactly the same on both sides, I'm going to keep it and count it as one instead of breaking up carbon and oxygen, which makes this much tougher. So go ahead, I'm going to write FeCl, 
Na, and then CO3 as a group. And then same order, Fe, Cl, Na, and CO3. So go ahead and count them. Iron, I just have one. Chlorine, I have three, two, sodium, and in this case, one CO3. Because remember, this three is a part of the CO3. It's not telling you, telling you that you have three of them. On the right, I have two iron. I have three CO3s. We're not going to multiply or add these together at all. We're only looking at this three. Um, I have one sodium and one chlorine. So I'm going to start off with my metals. My iron and sodium right now are incorrect. So I'm going to work with iron first. We have one on the left, two on the right. So I'm going to focus on just the left-hand side. And I'm going to make sure that I get two iron on my left. Two times one means I now have two iron. This also affects chlorine. Two times three means I now have six chlorine. All right, if we look at sodium, um, we could go ahead and balance this out first. I'm gonna write it a little bit smaller because I know we're gonna have to update it and I don't have a way of erasing this. So I'm gonna place a two out in front of NaCl. Um, two then would mean I have two there and now I have two chlorine. All right, now I can look at my, um, I could look at the polyatomic ion. So if we change that, we have one CO3 on the left, three on the right. So I want to place a three in front of Na2CO3. That means then I now have three CO3s, which is great. That's what I wanted, three times one. But I've also changed the sodium. So three times two now means I have six sodium. So now if you look, iron, um, the CO3 polyatomic ion is all set, but Na and Cl are incorrect. But we can see that we have six chlorine and six Na's. So this is an easy fix. You can just erase the two, and then I'm going to place a six out in front of NaCl. That happens a lot. Sometimes you have to update the numbers that you started with. So I can now make these each six, and now everything balances. I can now go ahead and place ones in the rest of the um, coefficient spots, and this one has been successfully balanced. All right, the last one of these that I'm going to specifically work with you on. Um, again, go ahead. Mn is going to be equal to 2 on the left. Um, CO3 is back as a pack on both sides, so I'm going to use CO3 as a group. So let me just go ahead and make parentheses around that. So remember on the right, I have three CO3s. Mg, I just have one. And NO3, okay, I have two. And now I'm going to go and copy down the same list on my right. So Mn, CO3. Mg and NO3. Okay, Mn I just have one, NO3 I have three of them. I have one Mg and only one CO3 because remember the CO3, the three is a part of that group. All right, so let's look at our metals. Um, Mg's are okay, but Mn's are not. So I'm going to go ahead and place a two out in front of Mn NO3 three, which changes Mn to two. However, NO3, I've now done 2 times 3, which now means I have 6. Okay, so M and MGs are balanced. However, our polyatomic ions are not. Oops, and i got to just make sure I have another tally to have a total of 6. So I'm going to balance out the NO3s at the moment. Um, so I have 6 NO3s on my right and only 2 on my left. So again, I'm thinking of what can I put here that times 2 will give me and get me up to 6. So that would be a 3. 3 times 2 means I now have 6 on my left, which is wonderful. But I've also affected mg, so now I also have 3 mgs. Because again, coefficient of 1 there, 3 times 1. All right, and now I just got to go back to fixing mg, because that's my metal. It looks like I'm going to have to place a 3 in front of the mgco 3 um, in order to get this up to the left-hand side. Uh, and then I've also affected the CO3. So 3 times 1 is going to then mean that I have 3 CO3s. Everything now matches. I have conserved mass correctly, and I can place a 1 um, in the remaining coefficient spots. All right, final little piece is we can take um, reactions that are written in words and change it and convert it into... Um, our formula. So this basically is combining what we've done the past couple of lessons. So copper 2 sulfate, um, that means that copper has a plus 2 charge, okay, from that Roman numeral. Oxygen is going to be negative 2, so I just need one of each. So I have CuO, it's a solid, so I'm going to keep the phase. Carbon is not diatomic, so I can just write a C for carbon. Arrow, copper is also not diatomic, so Cu. 
by itself. And then carbon dioxide, those, this is one of the more common ones I've asked you to make sure you know for this unit, which is CO2. The prefix dye means you have two of them. All right, now we can't just leave it like this because remember we have to conserve mass. Um, the problem is oxygen. We have two oxygen on the right and only one on the left. So that means I need to write a two in front of the copper oxide, um, which then means that my coppers are off. Okay, so that means I need to end this with a two in front of the solid copper, and then I can place one in the remaining spots. So now this is balanced, it's conserved mass, and I've showed all the reactants and products correctly. All right, go ahead at the bottom. Magnesium is a solid, it's not diatomic, so I can just leave it like that. We have hydrogen and sulfate, SO4. Sulfate on table E is negative two. Hydrogen is plus one. So I need two hydrogen in order to balance out the SO4, which is an aqueous solution. Now this one, hydrogen, just be careful. Hydrogen is a diatomic element, so you, it must be H2. Okay, and it's a gas. And then magnesium is a plus two, and sulfate is a negative two, so I just need one of each. And then make sure you write the AQ. And that's all you need for that one. All right, so that's all set. Go ahead and write your summary. I would definitely make sure you talk about why we balance chemical equations, and you also might want to talk about the strategy or explain how you see it when you balance an equation. All right, that's it.